Hello everyone, my name is Luka Novaković and I will be explaining and demonstrating the example model of the battery pack with battery management system. So as previously I've explained how the battery cell component works, I will not go into much detail regarding that. The load that is now represented only as a voltage source connected with the resistor is completely definable by the user. For example, the load can also be the inverter connected with the machine or a converter connected with the grid, for example. So the rest of the circuit uh, from the main contactor to the right is completely defined by the user. This is only an example. And in this example, there is a charger, meaning that the current is being controlled to be a certain value so that the battery cells can be charged and discharged for the demonstration purposes. In this case, I will uh, show an example of how software in the loop or how model in the loop approach for the battery management system would work. This battery management system was created by me and uh, it only represents the basic functionalities of the battery management system, meaning providing protection, providing measurements and uh, providing passive balancing of all the battery cells that have either too high value or that have too high of a difference between the other battery cells and the rest of the battery cells. Uh, it also controls the main contactor for safety reasons and it turns it off whenever a certain protection requires for safety reasons that the current stops flowing through the batteries. This battery management system is not a library component and thus does not exist in the library explorer. This battery management system is simply a C function with some predefined inputs such as the balancing thresholds, the protection for the over voltage and the under voltage thresholds, and the temperature over temperature and the under temperature uh, thresholds. So I will then further explain a little bit about the model. Basically the battery management system measures all these battery cells. There are eight battery cells in series and two of them in parallel. Two of them in parallel are def uh, is the property. Here is the property that, that defines that there are two battery cells in parallel and it is defined in this way for each and every battery cell that is connected in series. They all at this point in time share the same properties so the battery pack is not unbalanced by default. However, uh, the temperature that is flowing into each and, every of the, each and every one of these battery cells is also the same, meaning that the off-balancing of either one of the battery cells cannot come from the temperature either. But the battery cell component in itself has the property to override the battery cell voltage, terminal voltage, or to override the state of charge of each of these battery cells, meaning that uh, once the simulation is up and running, we can change the state of charge or immediately just override the battery cell voltage and we can test how the battery management system right now included in the model uh, can react and whether or not the code that is integrated in this battery management system is reacting properly. So to continue, I will have to start the simulation. I will compile and load the model into HillSCADA, which I have already done. We, this opens a SCADA window. This SCADA window is predefined and ready for this example. When I start the simulation, we can see that the voltage of the battery pack is at 33.2 volts. The temperature is set at 30 degrees Celsius. Here we can see some protection values, meaning what happens if uh, some of these parameters are reached, we should see the signaling of the battery management system that some flags are turned on and that some protection uh, has been triggered. 
Uh, let's see what happens if I reach the temperature of 55 degrees. It's also important to notice that right now no current is flowing as the main switch is disconnected. Uh, to, to have the current flow actually that I desire, such as 5 amps charging the batteries or maybe minus 5 to discharge the batteries, I will first need to connect the main contactor. I will not do this because I just want to show the reaction of the over temperature protection first. So let's put the temperature at 60 degrees Celsius. If I do this, we can see that the cell voltage is increased. Uh, this behavior is, is, is something that we would expect from the battery cells, but changing of temperature of each and every battery cell immediately from 30 to 60 is not physically possible. Therefore, it is, uh, it is expected that the battery cell temperature is increased slowly and not via a step input as a temperature that I have just done. Uh, to do this, a user can also edit in a thermal model or a thermal network that connects the temperature that I select in the SCADA with some additional components and parameterization and then to give the actual temperature of the battery cells. Then to parameterize the thermal network, uh, that would be the next step and then the temperature would not be so suddenly changed. But for the purposes of this demonstration, the temperature can be changed immediately. And we can see that the open circuit voltage reacts immediately, as it should, to this change of the temperature. All eight uh, series battery cells uh, exhibit the property and because they are parameterized in the same manner, they all exhibit the same voltage on their terminals. The over temperature flag is still on, so I will need to reset the faults of the battery management system manually. So now that the over temperature is demonstrated, maybe we can start connecting the main contactor and enable some current to flow. Right now the batteries are being charged even though they are set to start at 100% state of charge. This is not what we want, because we do not want to overcharge them, so let us discharge the battery cells. In here, at this graph, we can see that all the battery cells have the same graph, and uh, it is behaving as it is physically expected. The battery cell is... the voltage of the battery cells is being lowered, because the state of charge of all the battery cells is being drained. It is lower because the current is flowing out of the batteries and into the load. So this is expected behavior and we can also see a sudden voltage drop or a sudden voltage increase by changing the polarity of the current due to the internal resistance of the batteries seen here as a large spike in the voltage of the battery cells. We will, we can now increase uh, the charging current or discharging current in this case to minus 20 amps and now we can see what happens if I now trigger an under temperature event. To do this I will have to set the temperature to minus 25. When I do this under temperature flag is raised because this is how I programmed my virtual BMS and the main contactor is switched off. You can see now that the current is not flowing because the contactor is switched off. And this will be the case until the temperature reaches the normal value and also the flags are reset. Now I will also need to give the manual signal to connect the main contactor. When I do this, the current is then again applied through a charger. The battery pack is being discharged as we can see here. Then we can also demonstrate an over voltage and an under voltage protection of these battery cells. To do this I only need to increase or I only need to increase the voltage of a certain battery cell beyond the maximum voltage. 
I can do this via V-cell override. This is a SCADA input connected to every battery cell and it can be modified here. V-cell value set can be triggered for 2 volts. This means that the battery cell number 1 will have the, its value set at 2 and I will just need to give the flag uh, a permission to override the voltage of the battery cell number 1. When I do this, we can see that the under voltage flag is raised and again uh, the main contactor is switched off. Another important thing to mention is that not only one battery cell now has the voltage of 2 and we can test our battery management system, how it reacts, but we can also test the balancing of all the battery cells. We can see that uh, the balancing uh, flag indicated by the LED diode is on for all the battery cells except the battery cell number 1. This is because the way that I have programmed my battery management system, which is simple in relationship to other battery management systems, is that whenever the voltage of the battery cell uh, increases, so the largest difference between two battery cells increases over 200 millivolts, the balancing will induce in all the battery cells the balancing current to reduce the voltage of the battery cells such that they all fall within a given threshold of 200 millivolts within one, one of another. So because the battery cell 1 has the lowest voltage, all the other battery cells are being balanced until they reach 2.2 volts. So we can see how the balancing is happening by seeing here that the cell current is actually flowing through the battery and this is the balancing current. Also we can see that the cell voltage is dropping, although slowly, and that the state of charge is also dropping. It will take some time for these battery packs to discharge to 2.2 volts. Now we can see that the balancing stops when I stop overriding the battery cell voltage. I will have to reset all the faults and we can see that the balancing is stopped for the battery cells. However, since the other battery cells have been balanced, we can see that the other battery cells now have a lower voltage because the state of charge was being drained during the balancing than the battery cell number one. All of these, all of these examples of a battery management system are here to show that the battery management system can be introduced inside the model via a C function and uh, with its own code that can be programmed by any user. Therefore, the first step could be a software in the loop where a software written here in this component can be run inside the model and in real time if necessary and then we can see how the functions of the battery management system are performing. Uh, then the next step would be to externalize this code into a microcontroller to test the microcontroller which would then do the same thing that this battery management system is doing but not with the go to and from uh, tags but from the digital inputs and from the digital outputs of the hardware in the loop device. So instead of having a balancing tag in this case where we have the where we have the controller in the loop, we have the option to connect the digital input and then to specify digital input index. This in essence would do the same thing that the battery management system is doing right now. Another option and another use case where I have seen this kind of approach used is for example when the battery management system is contained in a hierarchy of some sort, meaning there is a master battery management system and slave battery management systems. 
In that occasion, for example, if there is only one slave battery management system and one master battery management system, uh, in this case, perhaps outside or on the microcontroller connected to the hill, then this outside master battery management system would talk to the slave battery management system where slave battery management system would send the results through the hill to the master battery management system. This could make sense, for example, if we had a significantly larger number of battery cells and therefore needed some control units for these battery cells, such as this slave BMS in that scenario. We could per perhaps have a number of these, such as four, where, where all four of these are sending data via CAN communication or Modbus communication or any other communication protocol that we support, can then send through CAN and uh, receive through CAN the data and the commands to do their dedicated job. And, it could, and this slave BMS could then send the voltages back to the master BMS, which is on the controller connected to the hill, where the master BMS can estimate the state of charge of all the battery cells and give the commands to the slave BMS. This concludes the model in the loop example of the battery management system. Thank you for listening.